In the first part, we learned what a chord scale is and how it can help us connect a group of chords to a single root scale. For example, the C major scale contains the chords C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor and B diminished. All we've done here is build a related chord on each degree or note of that parent scale. Each note within each chord is also part of that parent scale, so it's all connected. We can then pull out different combinations of those chords to build chord progressions that harmonise with that root major scale. Even minor key progressions can be seen as relative to that root major scale. Simply resolve to the sixth degree chord. In this example, A minor is the relative natural minor key of C major. Aside from being able to write chord progressions that flow naturally, Training your ear to hear these chord relationships will help you identify when a single root scale can be used in a solo, for example. So, if you heard the chords D minor, C major, A minor, G major, you'd know that the C major scale is the parent scale, and therefore all the notes contained within that scale will also be contained within the chords. In other words, C major is the natural choice for harmonising with those chords. But don't neglect other keys. For example, here's that same progression in F major. G minor, F major, D minor, C major. As mentioned previously, this is the formula behind many songs you'll hear and demonstrates just how important the major scale is to our organisation and understanding of harmony. However, don't feel you have to harmonise within a single scale system like this all the time. That would be quite restrictive to your creativity. We'll come to exploring harmony outside this scale in time. Up to now, we've been building three note triads on each degree of the major scale. We're now going to extend those triads to 7th chords, 4 note chords that make use of an additional note from that parent scale. Here we can see which notes and intervals have been added to the basic triads on each degree. Note that M7B5 represents a minor 7 flat 5 chord, sometimes called a half diminished 7th chord, which is the natural chord built on the major scale 7th degree. As this table is no doubt a bit overwhelming to look at, I'm going to introduce you to a more practical visualisation technique where this entire chord scale can be played across just four frets of the guitar neck. I'll show you some of the ways in which being able to see it this way is beneficial later on. What we're about to look at also ties in with knowledge of chord construction and learning chord shapes across different strings. So, here we have our parent scale. I'm using A major this time, since the root is on A. But you'll probably already know that these scale patterns are movable, depending on the key in which you're playing. Starting on its first degree, the root of the scale, we can create its first degree chord, A major 7th. As you can see, the intervals of the major triad are there, plus a major 7th interval. You can also see how the chord shape has been pulled straight from the scale pattern. Let's now move to the next degree for our second degree chord. We're going to move one note at a time because doing it this way will demonstrate how the harmony between the notes used in the chord is directly connected to the scale. The first, or root, of A major moves to the next degree in the scale, the second. The seventh of A major moves to the first, or root, as the next degree in the scale. 
the third of A major moves to the fourth. And finally, the fifth moves to the sixth. So all we've done to get our second degree chord is move all the notes of the preceding degree chord up to their next position in the scale. Because we now have a new chord, the degree it's built upon becomes the root, and its related intervals change in relation to that root. This gives us our second degree minor seventh chord. So now we have our one and two chords in their seventh forms. A major 7 and B minor 7. Continuing, we move our second degree chord notes up to their proceeding scale degrees. We now have our third degree chord, C sharp minor 7, as its root is C sharp, and the intervals of the parent scale from that position build a minor triad with a flat or minor 7th. Note that it's also common to include the lower octave fifth in this minor seventh chord shape and play it as a bar chord. Don't worry if the chord construction element is confusing to you at this stage. If you only focus on one thing, it should be how these chords are connected to their parent scale, and as we'll hear in a bit, the sound of these chord relationships in different combinations. Continuing from the third degree chord to the fourth, that's D major 7 as our four or subdominant chord. By the way, if the interval numbers are confusing you, just ignore them and just memorize the chord forms based on that major scale pattern. But do make sure that at some point you spend time learning where intervals appear in relation to a root note like this. I have lessons for this on the site. Continuing, it's easier to visualize the move to the next chord in the scale by including the intervals of this four chord on all strings as follows. By knowing where the intervals lie on all strings, you can also visualize different voicings and shapes for the same chord. More on that later. So to the next degree, Remember, all we're doing here is pushing these interval blocks along to their next note in the scale to get the next degree's chord tones. E7 as our 5 or dominant chord. Again, you can pick out a few chord shapes here, but the most common is shown here. F sharp minor 7 as our 6th degree chord. Moving on. G sharp half diminished as our 7th degree chord. If you look at the intervals in relation to the 7th degree root, we can see what makes up this type of diminished chord, sometimes called a minor 7 flat 5 chord. From the 7th, we move up a half step back to the 1st degree, where we build the same A major 7th chord an octave higher than the root from which we started. This chord shape gives us a higher voiced major 7th chord. We now have 7 chords in the natural key of A major with which we can harmonize the scale. In straight sequence, Here's how it would sound. Any combination of these chords, or even just any single one of these chords, will harmonize with the A major scale. As I mentioned earlier, it's good to learn these relationships in different keys. Simply move that low E string starting root to the appropriate fret. Same scale, same derived chord structures, different key. Now from this point we could explore several avenues as far as using what we've just seen to develop our knowledge of chords and their connection to scales. In short, 
this knowledge opens the door to far greater things. Once you start exploring these avenues, as we will be doing in the next part, you'll be surprised at just how much hidden musical potential one scale can have. Cheers. Thank you.